in one, which I was about to cross, and really this was happening in five, six, seven seconds, really. Again, before I could do anything more about it, I hadn't any other runway left, and uh, I was heading straight for the village at the end of it, a village called Bradenstoke. So you had nothing you could do at that stage but take off? That was my only saviour, that flight, and as I say, it was trim ready for takeoff, so really it was just a little pull back on the stick, and the thing had taken off, and uh, it had gathered so much speed by that time, and there I was. But once airborne, couldn't you have ejected? No, I couldn't because the ejection seat was uh, made safe for servicing. It had the ground locks in so that um, no inadvertent um, ejection could take place on the ground. You had no canopy either, did I you? hadn't the canopy on because I had a whole lot of wires streaming in there onto switches, with, which I was using to try and simulate this fault, or try to face the fault. So there you are, airborne, in a, in a lightning fighter, travelling at no doubt no few miles per hour. Right, yes. Um, what, what, were you in radio contact with the ground? Could you no, ask for help? No, I wasn't, because I, I was using hand signals with a Land Rover, which was in contact with the air traffic control, telling them, yes, I was ready to do another check and another check, and this was my only contact. So really, I'd lost contact with the ground when I had, uh, took off like that. So did you fly around in a circle? Well, no, I, I obviously had to try and get the speed back because it was building up on me and I had the undercarriage down and I recognised that it wasn't a good thing to let the speed build up. So I recall then what I was taught that morning, how to get it out of reheat, um, and managed to get it out of reheat and throttle back before the speed built up too much. Then, of course, it was a case of uh, trying to save myself, really. It was self-preservation. Was I going to attempt uh, to land where? What could I do? So, really, I tried to compose myself a little bit and made an attempt to land on the duty runway. Now, you, in fact, you have flown an aircraft before, haven't well, you? Well, I had been pilot trained as an engineer of a light propeller aircraft, that sort of uh, Tiger Moss, Chipmunks and, and Harvard. Yeah. But nothing of this sort, obviously. Oh, heavens above, no. I'd never flown a jet aircraft before, no. So how did you get down? Well, I made three attempts uh, on the duty runway, but they were completely uncoordinated, both in uh, sort of direction of the runway, uh, in, in rate of descent, and on one occasion I was even down below runway height. I got down into the valley and approached the runway from underneath, you might say. Mm. Uh, so I, I knew I was going to make a mess of it had I attempted any of those um, landings. And then I thought, well, if I go in the other opposite direction of landing, I would at least be good landing uphill and I wouldn't endanger the other village at the end of the main runway, which was Lynham Village. So I tried a circuit on the main runway in the opposite direction, and it seemed as though I might be better off that way. So I made a long circuit, a wide circuit, and came down, and I felt as though I was starting to handle the aircraft better, and I seemed to get the line of the runway ahead of me, and it seemed as though I was going to touch down at the right place. And I was intent on keeping it down if I could. I didn't want to do it again, really. What was the landing like? Well, it, it, I suppose I was thinking of Tiger Moth flying at the time because I must have tail bumper was rather low when I landed. And uh, that was another thing that uh, amazed me because my tail bumper hit the ground and it severed the big parachute wires. I didn't know this. So when I had all three wheels on the ground, I was looking around the cockpit for the big parachute um, toggle to pull, which I found eventually pulled it, but the red brake parachute just dropped off. It didn't give me any retardation. So you had to rely on the brakes? I had to rely on the brakes, and I suppose I burnt them up, uh, all of them, uh, and had about 100 yards left at the end of the runway. It's an incredible story, Taffy, it really is. And you saw the aircraft again this week at Duxford. Well, that's right, it's at, at Duxford, and I was going that way with uh, my wife and some close friends and asked if I could have the ladder put up to look in the cockpit. And what did it feel like when you saw it again? Did it all come flooding back? nostalgic, that's right. Very nostalgic uh, to think of it, of course. And uh, I was so pleased to see how the Imperial War Museum had been looking after the aircraft because all the instruments were in the cockpit. They hadn't taken any of those out. It was as it was.
Does it have a plaque on the aircraft to say, they this have, is where Taffy Holden nearly messes in? They have. They have a little plaque there with my name in it, yes. It's incredible. Well, thank you very much indeed for telling us the story. Thank you, John. That's been quite a moment. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, Bye-bye. Now. And Commander Taffy Holden on the phone there. The story is surely one of the oddest to come from the archives of the RAF's narrow escapes. Mm-hmm.